Have you ever experienced the power of unity in action? Perhaps you've also experienced the effects of this unity. Hello, my name is Arak, and today we're going to be talking about prayer for unity. A few years ago, a couple of our kids began playing musical instruments. During their first few performances, you could tell that the instrumentalists were still just figuring things out. It was not just an issue of skill. A few times here and there, someone would play in the right key or play the right note at the wrong time. In that moment, they would lose harmony. What was meant to be music became noise for a split second. And as they have matured as musicians, there are less and less of these moments. There's way more music and much less noise. They were not only getting more skilled as instrumentalists, but through practice together, they were getting better at playing in unison. In the context of music, that word unison means together at the same time. This stirs up images of unity. See, unity is powerful in the context of music. And if you're not musically inclined, let me encourage you that unity is also powerful in other areas of our lives. It's so powerful that we find examples of the devil attacking unity from the very beginning where his influence led Adam and Eve to commit the first sin and the curse followed. God acknowledges the power in unity in Genesis chapter 11. The people of Babel came together and decided that they would build a city with a tower that reaches the heavens so that they would make a name for themselves. They were seeking self-promotion and were going in an opposite direction from God. The people of Babel were united in language, vision, and effort. And as a result, they were able to accomplish so much that God says in verse 6, Behold, they are one people and they have all one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. God had to put an end to what the people were doing. However, he acknowledged that there was power and momentum in their unity. And as a result, they were on a path to accomplish something they would never have done if they were not unified. In your own lives, think about how many times you may have sacrificed unity on the altar of getting the upper hand. How much more could you have accomplished in unity than divided? In John chapter 17, verse 21, Jesus prays for unity. He says that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. See, Jesus was praying for unity amongst us as believers. And it's instructive to note that he says, may people identify us as believers, as followers of Jesus through our unity. So he has called us to accomplish great things together in unity. So today, consider your words, consider your actions. Are you sowing seeds of unity? I know what that's like. I have a strong personality and this can come across as me standing my ground. In my household, I like to say that I'm passionate. However, I have learned by the help of the Holy Spirit to listen twice as much as I speak. I'm not always successful, y'all. I'm a work in progress, so pray for me. My prayer for you is that you will walk in wisdom and discernment as you navigate what it takes to preserve unity. Know this, not all things are major, some things are minor. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you today that we can gather together and just learn for a brief moment about what it takes to work in unity. And Lord, thank you for reminding us and teaching us about the priority and the importance of unity. And so, Lord, today I pray that we'll walk in wisdom and discernment, even as we seek to preserve unity. And Lord, as we do that, we know that we'll express your joy, your peace, and your strength. We give you all the praise and all the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's been great hanging out with you. We'll see you same time tomorrow.